Hare Krishna and Dharma Pranam, Sri Prabhupada. Uh, thank you for giving me opportunity to give a presentation, even though I don't know anything. So uh, before I start, I want to give some background that uh, why did I choose this uh, topic? So like one month ago, I was uh, talking with my old friend, a college friend, and uh, he told me that uh, uh, wealth is more important than the spiritual. So uh, to keep it, uh, keep that conversation. In mind, I prepare this presentation. So, as we know, the topic is the illusion of material wealth and the path to true happiness, inspired by the Prabhupada teaching. So, on the cover photo, we can see the uh, happiness is uh, saying that you can't buy me, and money is saying I can buy anything. So, they are both challenging each other. So, we will go to the uh, presentation and see which uh, who is superior uh, and who is the winner. So, introduction. So, the main topic that we know that uh, we have to understand that uh, limitation of uh, material wealth and uh, what is a uh, true happiness. We will go to this presentation and uh, psychological way we, we will conduct, we will see it, how it is important in uh, not our, in our uh, devotees' life and even the material people's life. It is important to know limitation of uh, this material wealth. So, first uh, point is what is the nature of uh, material wealth? So, obviously, we all need money, right? Uh, we need money to buy our basic uh, needs also. It's like basic needs are now uh, food, shelter, even the mobile is also a basic need now, and electricity is there. So these are basic need if we need money right so <clears throat> we cannot say that money is not important money is there but to the what extent it, it is important we need to understand right so what first we will go to the nature or what is the money nature money cannot be stay in one end it always go from one person to another person the moment you go out of your house you spend money right you buy vegetable you buy clothes yeah, you buy something else that you need the moment you go out you spend some money so it is going from your pocket. Even though now we don't even require to go out from our mobile, we send money online, we buy something online. So money's nature is temporary. It cannot be stay in one hand. Right. So in this uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, there's a verse in that day it is mentioned. In any case, money does not stay in one place. It passes from one hand to another. Ultimately, no one can enjoy the money. It remains a property of supreme personality of God. So that uh, we will explain uh, in a further presentation how it is a property of uh, God. So this is the first uh, nature that it is temporary. It cannot stay with uh, one person. It always go from one to another. Right. And second point is, uh, deceptive fulfillment. So we think that uh, money will fulfill our uh, desire. Like someone, if someone wants the iPhone, he, he can buy iPhone, buy only money, right? But if someone uh, wants to buy something, he only get his buy the money that he, he, he has to spend. So this uh, actually, uh, what money actually brings, there are the 15 uh, qualities that money brings with, uh, with itself. Uh, it is mentioned in this Shloka, uh, Simar Bhagavatam 11.23.18 to 19. That what is uh, these are the qualities, 15 qualities. Death, violence, speaking lies, duplicity, lust, anger, perplexity, pride, toiling, enmity, faithlessness, uh, envy, and danger caused by women, gambling, and intoxication are the 15 undesirable qualities. So these are the qualities that uh, money brings with, uh, with itself. So, like money is there, the type will be there, uh, and by uh, money we... Uh, we get that lust also agreed also that oh, we have to uh, collect more money we have to accumulate more money and, and pride comes when you have so much money and pride comes that i'm so rich i can buy anything and there are some of course uh, when there is some money you always uh, get fear and you always uh, uh, think other person as your enemy who is uh, who, who will steal your money and when you have money you also get uh, attracted by the woman and uh, other person to get your money right and when you have money you also try to do the gambling so these are the false ascribed value that it brings and it design uh, and one who is uh, spiritual who is, is more advanced or is in his spiritual wants to avoid uh, these is that money uh, brings uh, undesired qualities now the money that it creates an illusion, right? When you have money, you always think that you are safe. You you try to save your money for your family, for your travel expenses, for your health. You always try to collect money and uh, you think that if you have money, you will be safe. But it is an illusion. The money, uh, well, first point is money, well, often uh, brings anxiety to the constant fear of love. So when you have money, you always get in fear that it is like a... Uh, 
uh, you get fears when it, it should not go away from your pocket or from your bank account always in fear and this this fear actually creates stress in your mind and this satisfaction that uh, even uh, if someone is rich and uh, he always think about money this money that nobody should steal it or uh, it should not go uh, like in waste even if you go to any rich man or any when uh, like for example when we go for a donation when we ask donation from uh, shop to shop some shopkeepers they are always looking at the camera they see in camera they 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 get fear that somebody uh, you know uh, somebody not steal their money from the that uh, they keep the money from locker from uh, anywhere they always see the camera they uh, they always get fear even they don't even talk talk to you properly but they are always in fear and it creates uh, anxiety stress and this uh, this satisfaction and they always keep in mind that it, it is their money so and to back this there is a slope uh, karmis are always anxious to accumulate wealth so this is common that uh, economy is that they always accumulate wealth and for what they do they they do the they do collect for their sense gratification but for that purpose they work very hard even if you see a very rich man uh, or even a normal person they always work very hard i i am staying in bombay i can see that in train there are so many people they are working very hard for so much little money so even though they, they are working so hard but their results are not satisfy they the results are not satisfying in this sometime they are work result only in frustration but devotee who has decided their life to the service of god can achieve uh, substantial result without working very hard this result exceed the devotee expectation so uh, this in this close look there we we can see the our karmis are always anxious to accumulate well and when uh, they do it for sense gratification and they don't even get uh, satisfied from it and in the other side we can see devotee is not even earning the money with a especially who devotee or full time they are not uh, doing job outside job they are just doing a service to the god and they get supplied uh, by god every day right so uh, they talk about that that uh, money that brings a uh, uh, material happiness uh, that is uh, they call the happiness so called happiness they call it so what is that material happiness uh, is explained by palat maras simon pogadam Uh, 7.9.25 in the material world every living entity desires some future happiness which is exactly like a mirage in the desert which is a water in the de- where is a water in the desert or in other world where is happiness in this material world as for this body what is this value is merely a source of various diseases is so called philosopher scientist or politician know this very well but nonetheless they aspire for temporary happiness happiness is very difficult to obtain but because they are unable to control their senses they run after so called happiness of material world and never come to the right conclusion so from this sloka we can learn how happiness the material happiness is like uh, is just like a mirage in the desert so we always see that this they say that uh, they say Uh, like it is better to cry in parari uh, no than to cry on cycle right so they say like that they they, they think they are, this is a uh, actually happiness but uh, uh, we can see this just like a mirage once uh, your body get uh, destroyed so money also get this uh, you cannot uh, bring your money to uh, after uh, that you cannot bring that money so this money is just like that is just ready to go away so what actually is a uh, the two happiness that we need to understand so so prabhu is saying happiness is found in spiritual practice and devotion not in material accumulation like just like material accumulation uh, that you, know, you want to buy house you want to buy properties you want to buy uh, new clothes new electronics and all and you think that happiness uh, bring from but from that you get more desire to accumulate more once you buy some Uh, electronic then you will buy to uh, new more things so it uh, it never go uh, com- it never go satisfy if you always desire for more so the main uh, happiness is found in spiritual practice and devotion so there is from uh, was saying and uh, how can we find uh, this happiness this uh, also explained in bhagavad gita 2.66 one who is not uh, connected with supreme in krishna consciousness can uh, can have neither transcendental intelligence or a steady mind without which there is no possibility of peace and how can there be any happiness without peace like right? so we we once uh, like 
who is not connected with god he cannot uh, have uh, intelligent or steady mind and uh, without this peace how can there be happiness he, he always he will think about other things he will not uh, think about the more that he wants to buy from the uh, well from his money so he can he never be in peace even though some rich people they have so much money but at night they have problem with sleep why so because of that money only they 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 cannot sleep So how he is uh, able to be happy in this condition, right? So what is the path to true happiness? So uh, first, uh, for understanding that, we need to know who, who we are. So yeah, of course, uh, with money you can comfort your body, but you, uh, which you are really are is the soul. You you are not body, because body will destroy, will get destroyed at the end. You will die. But who will go? Uh, who who will go to next bird is a soul it, it is just like a, that one example is there that bird uh, bird and cage so we our body is just like a cage and soul is a uh, parrot or bird in the cage that we can see in the picture so how much uh, you give your body but if you do not give uh, anything to your soul then you cannot be satisfied you cannot be in peace and uh, at last you won't be have any happiness so from if, like in this example this uh, lady is uh, taking care of a parrot but uh, but he, he she is giving everything to the parrot nice cage nice uh, uh, nice uh, like environment but if you do not give the food to a parrot parrot eventually get die so same thing is with uh, our uh, with ourselves then How much, uh, how much we will give to uh, our body, but uh, we are not giving to our soul. We will not be in any satis, uh, any peaceful mind or happiness. So, in our main, uh, our focus is misplaced. Just like we always take care of the body, declaring that soul to happiness come from spiritual nourishment, not material comfort. So, to back this, there is a slope. Uh, the occupational activities a man perform according to his position are only so much used as labor if they do not provoke attraction for message of uh, pers- the of the personality of God. So, like in previous slide, we we understood who is not connected with the God, he cannot be have any peace or uh, happiness. Right. So, whatever we do in our activity, whatever we do, job or uh, study or anything, is useless unless uh, we get attraction for the God. So how can we at- get attract? Uh, how we can get attract to the God, and how can we finally find the uh, happiness? So in the next slide, we will see. In this Kaluga, like uh, many people, for happiness, they do various type of activities. Some to mm, uh, to to make their mind peace or uh, to make uh, make themselves uh, stress less. They do uh, other other types of things like yoga and uh, meditation. and all they do but uh, still they they don't feel the inner peace or uh, 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 fully satisfied so in kaluga uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu has uh, recommend that uh, you just do hari uh, do you do chanting and hearing he also quoted this uh, was hare nama hare nama hare nama eva kevalam palo nase eva nase eva nase eva gati anatya so there is no other uh, Uh, like in in this age of quarrel and hypocrisy, the only means of deliverance is the chanting of holy name of the Lord. There is no other way. There is no other way. There is no other way. So three times it is mentioned. There is no other way. Right. So it must be important. So so by only chanting once, uh, because what happened? First you begin with your uh, your chanting and hearing. So what you have to hear just uh, Hari Krishna Mahamantra that you you have to hear from the from the beginning to hear and when you chant, even though if you are chanting uh, less, but when you hear and chant, like just uh, some uh, my colleagues and friends they say they when they go to the temple they find peace and happiness there. Why? Because they are hearing God name right. So from that. they find the uh, happiness so when we do this daily why why do we have to go to a temple for peace and happiness we we can do it uh, every time we can be happy every second just when we are chant when we think about god when we hear about god we we get a happiness right so these are the simple step that we once one person has to begin with just hear and start chanting and also they for other different types of thing uh, they do 
they they did do yagna and other things so uh, another slope is there the last canto whatever result or option is satya yoga by meditating on vishnu and treta yoga by performing sacrifices and in dropa yoga by serving the lost lotus feet can be obtained in kali yoga simply by chanting the hari krishna maha mantra so this is our first step to uh, to the part of uh, true happiness we have to start chanting this maha mantra that is given by chaitanya mahaprabhu and uh, our acharya and uh, our guru is divine grace si bhakti vedanta swami shri prabhupada so this is uh, this is the conclusion that uh, i have come from prabhupada teaching and i would like to know uh, more from kalat prabhu and uh, samako in prabhu if they want to add anything to it so this is my presentation now हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी धन्यवाद प्रणाम जय प्रभुपाद जय प्रभु Yeah, it was wonderful presentation, Prabhu. It was very nicely made. Your, your, your first slide is very nice. Your introduction slide, you know, that is very nice, nicely made. Right, it is very nicely presented, nicely made. Good, Prabhu. Thank, Thank you, Hari Krishna. Yeah. Anything you would like to add? Prabhu? No, no, it's okay. Good, it was perfect. You covered everything. It uh, took me one month to pre- prepare this presentation. <laughs> one month, wow! But yeah. it was nice, nicely prepared. Very nice.